Welcome to Lydia and Danelle's ultrasound clinic, where we're correct about 50% of the time. Yeah. Chili, get back here. I don't think Chili wants to be here right now. Sure she does. Chili, doesn't Chilly. this look so fun? Oh look. Like a bunny, like a bunny. Give her some treats. There's the treats. There's treats. All right, Chili Billy. How many babies do you have? Now remember, we're not gonna count sacks. We're gonna count the sacks with a little embryo inside of it. Okay. So only if we see a little something something inside of it. Sorry. Okay, Lydia. So there's that one right there for sure, right? Okay. Because when you move, you see that thing right there. Yeah, that's that one. That one's one for sure. And then the one below it. Now, see, oh, here's, what, here's what I notice is when they go further along, the sacs that don't have any babies in them, they get smaller. And then the ones that are growing oh, get bigger. You see that? So I guess we could... Oh, there's this one up here. And then you can go up more. There are a couple up. See more. It's hard to look. Yeah, maneuver. Oh, there's, there's that one. Okay. So one in the top and one in the bottom of those two big ones. Yeah, so there's one, two. Do you see those two? Yeah. Okay, now let's see if we go back around if it's just the same one we're seeing. There could be that third. Yeah, isn't that, that third. three? Yeah, I think that there's three. So we've got the... Yeah, yeah. one, two, three. Uh-huh. And then I don't know what's going I on I think up those here. are just getting smaller. Yeah, because I don't see... I feel like they're kind of... It's crazy how when I move it, it doesn't do the, doesn't show it. So yeah, so we've, so there's one. Okay. Are we gonna say it? Are we gonna say three? Yes. I say hope three. Hope on three. Hope, that, hope three. Come on, Tilly. Oh, I know two for sure. I see two for sure. But maybe this one up he high that I kind of can't get yeah, to. Yeah, I know what you mean. Where you guys talk about this, I think about Rat Race. He's saying the embryonic sack. Okay, Lydia and I think that there could be three this year. Definitely two, which is sometimes a good number for Tilly. Sometimes Tilly does really good with two. But there could be three finally, right? Crossing our fingers. Maybe. So we're going to say two to three for her. It's weird because like, even when I move it up, it doesn't move those embryos down yeah. on the screen. It's the weirdest thing. Why do they not want to come up tonight? Why are they doing Because there's like grain this? out there. Now, Hazel's only had a singleton each time. So, Both times? Both times, and we don't want a singleton. So, Hazel. So, Hazel. You get it together. Get it together. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're good. We got this. She's got a lot more. Okay, Lydia. Well, <laughs> she definitely has two. Yeah, she definitely has two. Oh my gosh, Kitty, get out hey of here. Nice, Kitty. Oh, that's a good shot, Liddy. Look. Look Whoa. at that. That's like one, two, three, four. Okay, let's move it around like slowly and see. She might. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if there's anything in that top right one. She might have three. Cause she definitely has the one, two, and that might be a third one and up then, there. I don't know what that this one is. looks really little, like. Yeah, but look, there's some of that one up, up there. there. I no, I think it's the same one. So I'm gonna say three. I'm saying she's gonna have three. Yes. Or four. <laughs> four, Three to four. Three to four. Nice, good we job. We are gonna feed you a whole bale every day. All right, so we're thinking Hazel has three, maybe four, and we think Tilly has two, maybe three. Well, people always ask us if we check our boots for scorpions, and we don't. We don't check our, our shoes or boots. We probably should, Yeah. but they're never really in the boots, they're always at the walls of the property. So mm -hmm. they're never really crawling around on the ground. I say that and then that will happen. Yeah. People also ask, where are the kitties? Well, there's one. There's Salem one. wants to get it. Here's another one. And the others, 
are wanderers. Pepper's usually in the front orchard, Chloe's usually by the cars, and then Scout is usually in my sister's side of the house over there. She lives with us. Wait. Okay. Oh no, did it rain last night? How miserable. Are you guys okay? Salem checks up on all the goats, licks their backside, <laughs> and then she goes around and she tries to herd the chickens. There's not any chickens out today. It's too wet. And she loves to go check on the bucks with me. Come on, dog. But she does love to go into the buck pen. I'll be right back. Gotta check on the loud one first. I think Finnick wins the award for the loudest goat on our property. We've been giving Finnick a grower so that he can bulk up during this time that he's breeding the girls and using up a lot of energy. But um, once you start doing that, then they scream for it. Isn't that right, sir? I love how you feed him in the little kitchen sink over here. You're a good boy though, huh? Yeah. Finnick is cool because he has one black eye and one yellow eye. See that? There's the black side. Well, it's a little bit more marbled, I guess. He has a little bit of yellow in it. But he always puts his food in the stove. <laughs> he does. He's a pretty messy eater. You're smelling good now, Finnick. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we'll move Finnick to just sort of like a regular buck diet, which is mostly hay and some minerals. Not very many treats, not much grain. If they do have grain, they need to have grain that has ammonium chloride in it and no sweet feeds. He's doing good though, he's growing big and hopefully we will have a lot of his offspring in a few months. Okay, I'm back. Who wants to get milked? Huh? Daphne? <laughs> Come on. Come here. It's time to go, let's leave you. Come here. Let me grab this. Hold on, Olive. Oh, don't get that kitty. So I'm trying to consider if I should take Daphne to a show. I was just gonna take the junior girls, but she's still in milk and I think she might do really well. So it may be worth the work of getting her ready. She's kind of the whole package because she's a really good milker. She has a really good shape of udder. A really nice U arch at the top. She's also <laughs> really graceful when she's in the show ring and really easy to lead. So I probably should get her ready and um, start clipping her and getting her ready for the show. But it's a lot of work, so we'll see if we can get through all the other activities this month and maybe we'll bring her, we'll see. A lot of people ask if bringing them to a show will stress them out and make them abort their pregnancy. But abortions are pretty rare, usually only caused by a, a disease that they have or if they go completely off feed. So I'm gonna kinda go off of when we took the goats to the show the last time, they didn't go off any feed. They weren't too stressed to eat and they just settled down and chewed their cuds. So I don't think that any of the goats that I have, you know, stress out abnormally taking them somewhere. It adds a little bit of stress, but I always give them a B12 shot before we go and then when we come back and that seems to really help them deal with the stress. We're also gonna be with them the whole time, so I think they'll be fine. All right. Bye, have a good day, Tilly. You don't get milked, remember? Are you okay? You're okay. All right, Olive's gonna sneak in. Get on up there. You can do it. Good job. I might bring Olive too, I haven't decided yet. Olive has all of this capacity, but it's a little bit further down instead of filling up up here, which is what we wanna see. So I'm not sure how she'll do, but it might be fun to bring her. She gets along really well with uh, Daphne, so I think that having them together would help with the stress and stuff. You love how close I am to this? When you're a goat breeder, you guys, you don't care about anything, <laughs> anything like that. All right, you're all done. Come on. You can do it. Are you on the stump? That's the right stump? That's the not willow stump. Oh, wow.
Raven, do you want to get out? Yeah, okay. You seem like you're a bit stuck. Come here. Oh, there you go. Look, I saved you. Dolly, so pretty. They're both so pretty. All right, time to take off the gate and let the girls come in or out. Raven, that's your mama. Every time you put the goats back together, they have to go through a whole fighting thing again. Watch out, Tilly's a biter. <laughs> oh, she's headbutting right now. That's cheating. See, these little girls, they look so small. But once you put them next to the big girls, Salem, come. They look a lot bigger. So they're getting there. They're getting up in weight a little bit. You're being really tough, Prim. Everybody's got to work it out. Do some headbutts. So let's see if you guys know which is which. <laughs> so this is Reba. And that's Dolly over there with the spots. That's Prim up on the chicken coop. And then that's Raven right there. Fighting with the two black girls. Everybody's together. Oh no, did your house get flooded? Are you guys okay? <laughs> I guess they're fine, just eating breakfast. I know, it's crazy. You're such a good girl, Willow. You're growing another cute little goatee. It's really pretty. <laughs> Luna doesn't have time for us, she's just eating. She's just too busy eating right now. Good girl. Now that we've hit 90 degrees, guys, it's officially fall. And what's the perfect fall dish? Homemade chili. Now, I know there's a whole beans or no beans debate with chili, but I'm sorry guys, it has to be beans. Without the beans, it's just a meat soup. So we're not gonna do that. So we'll start, obviously, by sauteing the onions. And I've had legit people get mad at how I pronounce onion. They get so mad, they say stop doing that. But you know what? Sounds right to me, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Tonight I'm gonna use ground turkey for the meat in this dish. And we'll get that nice and cooked down after the onions are sauteed. There's also some garlic in there. And then we'll add roasted green chilies, roasted jalapenos, and then of course the beans, which are pinto and kidney. Honestly, I could eat a chili without any meat and just beans. That's how much I love beans. We'll add the diced tomatoes, and of course all the regular seasonings like chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, all the good stuff. And then finally, some beef broth. Next, we just let it simmer away on the stove and let all the flavors combine. After it's reduced a bit, oh, it just gets to that perfect consistency. You don't even need to thicken it. It's perfect. And what could go better in 90 degree weather than a nice warm bowl of chili? Let me know in the comments what you think makes the perfect chili. Gosh, it's dark out here. <laughs> the only place I can be is by this light to get any light. Thanks so much for joining us in today's video. I'm really excited and I'm actually a little bit shocked that our flushing technique worked so far. We'll see, we still got a bunch more doughs to go through. So hopefully we can have multiples and no singletons so that we can have nice balanced udders and no problems with them raising their babies. But in the meantime, if you wanna go back and see the babies that Tilly and Hazel had last year, go ahead and click here.